Okay, hi, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, as usual, if you have any um, questions or anything, let me know. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this week um, is kind of a, um, we're looking at the analysis of algorithms this week, just as a reminder, so this is our unit six or week six here. Um, this is some uh, um, complicated material this week, so I encourage you to, you know, spend some time watching the videos and, and, and reading the textbook and stuff. So uh, I think it's really important, um, you know, and in fact, this is kind of one of the hearts of this class is that making certain that people have um, had an introduction to the topic, at least, the analysis of algorithms. So there's lots of materials um, out there, you know, if, if, if the, the, the textbook reading I gave you or my lecture videos this week um, aren't clicking with you, um, I encourage you, um, like um, I just posted one here, uh, you can find it in our additional resources. If anybody else finds some good materials, um, you know, in general, I should have, um, uh, said this more for this class, but um, if you find things that helped you um, for any of the topics for our class on data structures or algorithms, uh, yeah, please send it to me so I can kind of add it to the additional resources um, somewhere in the site and, and keep that. So it might be help, if it's helpful to you, it might be helpful to other people. So, But I did like, um, he, he, had a, he had a nice video on kind of just the, the basics of big O notation, which is why I put that on there. So, and also a uh, binary search. So he talked about the uh, binary search. He also talks about quicksort in this video. So, so you know, you might wanna take a look at that if you've already looked at my videos on sorting and, and things from the, the previous week, so. Um, <clears throat> So my plan, I'm, I'm going to go maybe 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, and talk about our quick sort assignment here in this help session. Um, unless, of course, some people show up and ask some questions. Um, but I thought um, it would probably be most useful um, if, if anybody's uh, watching this help session um, to kind of go over this um, assignment six on implementing the quick sort. Okay. <coughs> This one is probably going to be a little bit tougher for most people than the previous uh, assignment five or assignment four, I think. So, um, because the the algorithms, the, the the functions you have to write are a bit more difficult than um, than what we've been doing before. So, so. Um, So <clears throat> let's just look at it kind of real quickly. Um, so, you, so you have to write four functions. So these are regular functions again, like we did for the last assignment or two here. So we've, back, we've kind of gotten uh, away from classes for the moment and are just writing um, standard um, uh, functions here, right? So the first two are meant to be relatively easy. So hopefully you can, you can figure these out. So the first one is simply to write a function that will swap values in an array okay, or, or a list. Okay? So um, I, I think these first, I think maybe all these functions maybe have to take the same kind of signature. So swap list values, as it says, it takes an array of integers as its first parameter. So you need to pass in an integer array. We've, we've done that before on some of our previous functions. Um, and it takes two indexes. So it, it takes an uh, um, integer and, and maybe you can call these left and right, okay? Um, and it's a void function, so it doesn't return anything, right? So, um, and, and yeah, like, like, like you should have learned by now, if you didn't learn um, in the previous Programming 2 course or, or a course on, if you took before using C, C++. So arrays are passed in by reference by default. So if you swap the values in this array, like you're supposed to be doing for um, this function, so if you swap the, the left index with the right index, um, those will get changed uh, so the caller can see those, right? <clears throat> okay. So um, Uh, 
so yeah, I mean, I was going to give away maybe the function signature for this one. Um, <clears throat> so as usual for this assignment, for, for the assignments, you'd want to start by, um, let me close off all this here. Um, actually, let me go ahead and, you know, as usual, let me kind of close this off and, and make certain, um, so let's close this um, folder here. So, you know, I always start by doing a um, um, open folder and, and always open at the top of the project repository. So right here, right? Um, and if we're working on assignment six, Um, I mean, it would always be, I mean, the fir very first thing I always do, of course, is make certain everything is building and running. Okay, so, so um, I'll go ahead and do a, a control shift C to uh, clean everything, control shift B to build it, um, make certain everything uh, builds and runs. And then we'll run our unit test, make sure that our unit tests work. But as usual, take a little bit of time to um, compile the, the catch um, unit tests or the assignment six tests will take a little bit of time. Let me go ahead and continue on my thought here about our um, first function that you're supposed to write. So um, if you look in here, there's actually a couple of helper functions in the, the test that you, we, um, I don't know, can't remember if we had these before. So, but these are needed um, to implement the test down here, right? Um, and the first one that we're gonna be implementing is the swap list values, right? So for example, the, the, the very first test here, I haven't uncommented out because I haven't really haven't checked that everything's compiling correctly here. But the very first one um, is if, if we have a list of two values, so called test one of five and 10, um, and we pass in the array of integers. So this, this is an array of integers of size two. When we pass that in, we tell it to swap zero and one. We should expect that, th that after we return from calling this function that we have 10 at index zero and five at index one, right? So that's what the swap list values is supposed to be doing. So anyway, um, it finally compiled there, and we should be able to run it. Um, um, Oh, um, um, I'm trying to remember, it's control shift key for, for uh, running the test. So, so yeah, we don't have anything uncommented out yet. So, but anyway, I mean, that's what you'd expect that um, since nothing's coming out, that no tests will run initially, right? Okay, um, yeah, let me go ahead and, and uncomment this here. And let me go ahead and as I started doing Let's go ahead and do the function prototype. So if I, if I create the function prototype, as I've shown before, um, I mean, that'll actually allow it to compile, um, but, um, uh, or it'll, it'll allow the, uh, the unit test to compile, but it won't allow everything to link together until I have some, an implementation of this function, right? So, so in any case though, you know, you need to start off with the function called swap list values, that's actually a void function. So, so notice it's not returning any result here. Um, and this function takes an array, I'll call it list of values as its first, and it takes two indexes, which I suggested you call left and right, right? So if we save that, um, if I recompile, so again, we're gonna have to wait for it to recompile my tests here, but it, it actually will be able to compile the test because I declared the function prototype um, in quicksort.hpp and we're including quicksort.hpp here. So that'll make the compiler happy in, in order, uh, in, in terms of compiling the assignment six tests.cpp file, right? 
but um, um, when it tries to link together, I, we don't have an actual implementation. We haven't actually implemented the code for the swap list values, right? So, so the link should fail once we um, get to linking it here. Um, so as another reminder, um, so for one thing, I mean, you know, I was going to say, don't forget, uh, make certain that you're adding the fun the required function documentation. Okay. Uh, and maybe I kind of want to show that because, um, um, you should also be using the, uh, the make docs command to, uh, to check your documentation. Right. So here, um, now that I've got the prototype defined, if we do like a make docs, um, I should get a warning that, um, you know, we, ha we don't have the function documentation um, created yet for this, um, this function here, right? So, uh, but you can't run make, well, I mean, you can run, uh, maybe I should just show it here. So I could create, I could just run it from a terminal from here. You, as usual, you have to run that from the correct location. So we have to change directory to assignments, um, assignment ASG, and we have to change to the assignment we're working on. If we want to try and run make by hand, like for example, make docs. Right. So, um, so here, notice, so it's telling me that we don't have the function documentation for um, the swap list values. Um, Right. So, you know, and, and uh, you know, don't, don't leave in comments that um, aren't correct for your code. Okay. So, so I, I will often have comments in here about things that you need to do for the assignment, but when you've done those, th those code, th those comments that I give you as kind of hints or instructions really aren't relevant usually, or, or if they are, you might have to modify them to make them relevant to your implementation. Right. So in this case, you know, we, we really should get rid of those. Um, and let's add in our function prototype here. Right. So my function prototype is going to be um, that. Um, oh, just, just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, hopefully um, um, that didn't, uh, that, that uh, my, I got interrupted there, I had to uh, do something. So um, where was it? Oh yeah, so for the, the documentation here, um, um, so I was gonna go ahead and give you the, the, the function prototype. I was about ready to, so I normally recommend that, you know, you create, you write your function prototype and then you just copy and paste it, right? And then our implementation, this is a void function. So, I mean, it can be just empty. It doesn't have to do anything to get it to compile, right? But, you know, um, when you get in your stub function, I mean, do write your, your function documentation or at least your initial function documentation. So you, you need, once again, you need a short description and a longer description. So given a list, which is an array of integers in this case, um, and uh, two valid indexes in this list of values, in this list, um, swap uh, the values uh, of the indicated indexes, all right? And as usual, you should have a, a blank line between that and the start of your params. We've got our list param, and th these, you know, some people didn't quite get the get the uh, the format for this function documentation. So you give the name of the parameter here, not the type, and the name has to match. So you know, I mean, things are case sensitive. So list, it's not list with a capital L or list or some other name, right? So, so the name of the parameter is list. Um, So this is an array of integers that have 
values to be swapped. Um, and left is just a in, an int index, which is a valid index into the list. Same for right. Uh, notice we don't say that it's illegal for left and right to be equal. I don't, I don't remember if I test that or not, uh, but you know, it ought to work even if left and right are, if we give the same index, a so swap a value with itself, right? So right is also an in index, which is a valid index into the list. Although, you know, we don't check, you know, so we don't give the size of this integer array. So we're not checking that you're giving valid indexes. So, the, you know, if, if the list has 10 values, the valid indexes should be from zero to nine or to, you know, one minus the size of the list, right? Uh, in this case, um, this is a void function. So you don't actually have to have a returns statement, right? In fact, you shouldn't have one. You'll, you'll get a warning and probably if, if you put in a returns. Let's see, I'm not certain about that, but um, yeah, seems like it, but, but um, it's not required. So if you don't have a return value, if you don't have any parameters, you don't need param tags. Um, and if you don't have a return value, you don't need uh, the at returns tag here. Right? Again, you know, it's no good thing to check, although you don't have to check this as often as, of course, compiling and stuff. Uh, but yeah, before you hand in, you, you probably do want to do a make docs and make certain that um, you're not getting any warnings, you know, so that all your functions are properly documented. Um, so anyway, that should be enough to allow us to build, right? Um, oh, and, and yeah, it, it um, um, was able to build relatively quickly because um, we didn't have to recompile the, the tests. We only had to recompile the, um, our stub function here. Now, so now if we run control shift T to run our tests, um, we see that they're running, but um, our tests are failing, including starting the very first test at line 72 here, which um, is of course to be expected because we're not actually swapping anything. So anyway, that's your first, your first um, function that you have to write. Uh, for the assignment, right? So hopefully you, you can figure out how to swap uh, the indicated values in the list here, right? So you'll need a, a temporary variable so that it will work. Um, um, I mean, unless you do something really clever, you're, you're gonna need a temporary variable anyway, and it should work even if you're swapping a, the, the same index with itself. I, yeah, I do test that. So um, if, I, if I test swapping zero with zero, we expect the list to still be the same one um, and one with one. Um, you still get, so it was eight and six before and it's eight and six afterwards in both cases. So. Um, <clears throat> All right, and then the rest of these, um, let me just um, mention one or two things about these. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that might be it for the day unless I get some questions um, from some students here. So find and swap pivot. Um, so this function takes the same three parameters. So, I, so you know, you, you, you have the function signature for this one as well. It takes a list and, and a left and a right. Um, So what you have to do is you have to, this is a little bit like the binary search that you had to implement last time. So given left and right, you want to calculate the middle value, which um, you do need to be a little bit careful with this. So some people were calculating it um, a little bit strangely, um, and, and I didn't really say anything about that. But, but make certain that you do something like, I could, I could do it here, but um, so if you have mid, mid should just be left plus right divided by two where you do the, the, the addition first, and you, the, and you want to do an integer division, right? So, so if, if left and right ends up with an, um, the sum of those is an odd number, uh, an, an odd value divided by two would, would end up with a, 
with a 0.5 result, but it'll just, the integer division will just chop off the 0.5. So it'll settle on one index, right? And this works even if left and right are, for example, zero and one for an array of size two, because if you add zero plus one, um, uh, you get a result of one and you do an integer division, one divided by two is 0.5, which tops off, so you get the index zero is gonna be the pivot in that case. So that, that's all you have to do for your pivot though, is, is calculate the midpoint like we had to do for the binary search. Um, <clears throat> and then you need to, so, so it'll, I'll take some points off if you don't reuse the, the, the previous function to do this, this part here. So once you've chosen the, the middle value, the, the, the midpoint, Uh, that's going to be used as what's known as a pivot here in our next function. And what you want to do is you want to swap that. So you're going to swap the midpoint value with the value at the end of the list of integers, okay? So, you know, if you look at these tests, so this should even work if you have an array of size one, which I don't remember if I test, yeah, I do a test here, but, um, but yeah, so the general case is, for example, if we have a list of size eight, or of size three, right, five, three, and eight, in that case, the mid value is gonna be at index one because we're gonna tell it to swap from zero to two, right? So, so um, find and swap pivot for this list from zero to length minus one, which is from zero to two, left is zero, right is two. That means that your pivot midpoint will be at index one. And so the result should be that you're gonna use three as the pivot and you're gonna swap three to the last value. So the, the eight and the three get swapped. And you should be using the swap list um, values function to actually do that swap inside of your find and swap pivot. So there should be a call to um, swap list values in there, all right? But notice they're still expected, like like even for a list of size one, you can call swap, find and swap pivot on it, right? I mean, it doesn't do anything, um, um, but your, your function shouldn't crash. Uh, you shouldn't end up trying to index memory beyond the, the end of your array or something like that. There, so, so there, uh, one common problem on this assignment is doing some problematic calculations of indexes like midpoints or things and, and doing stuff that ends up accessing values beyond the end of your array. And, and that may or may not cause some memory corruption or a crash um, or a segmentation fault at some point. So. All right, so those functions I hope aren't gonna be too difficult. The, the one that, that's the most complex is definitely the partition list, okay? So I'm just going to describe it here. So there is a, a description of the algorithm that you, that you might want to um, read um, for the, um, the this partition uh, list function here. So that, that's these four steps here are the uh, algorithm to partition a list, all right? So um, uh, I'll come back up to that. So this function takes the, the same three parameters. So I think, yeah, I mean, all three of these functions. So I gave you basically the, um, the um, signature for all the functions for this. Um, they're, they're all void functions that take an array of integers as the first parameter and then like a left and a right. Okay. So partition list, um, Oh, I'm wrong. No, I'm wrong. So partition list actually takes the, the same first three parameters, but it takes a fourth parameter, um, which is a pivot value. Um, so, and you should be reusing uh, your swap list values function in here. So, so find and swap pivot is going to be reusing swap list values, and your partition list is going to be reusing swap list values, right? So this, this function, the way I have it described and set up in this assignment, it's expecting that you first are gonna be calling find and swap pivot before you call partition list, okay? So once you call partition list, it's expected that the pivot value 
um, that you pass in is also going to be the value um, at the end of the array uh, in the, of, of, of the, the list of values here. Okay. So, so, you know, so before you call this function, the pivot value should have been swapped um, to the end of the list, right? So, and, and then in that case, the, the list that you're going to be partitioning is going to be one less than the current size of the list. And you're going to be partitioning on that partition value. So um, again, if you, if you look at the, um, the unit tests, so, I mean, you know, you definitely kind of want to maybe look at these and make certain you understand what's happening here, right? So when we call partition list, um, Um, on like this list of values. So notice that we call it, it, it has 10 values, but we're assuming that um, find and swap pivot, when we use this to do our final sorting, has been called. So that means that we consider five to be the pivot value in this list. And, and notice that we call it, giving it the, the left is zero, but the right is length minus two. Right? So length minus one would be index nine, but length minus two would be index eight, which is the one, which means that we want to perform the partition of the list on all the values from zero up to and including eight here. And we're going to partition them on five. Right? So what that means is that all the values that are less than five are going to end up um, on the left side of this list. So one, three, four, and two, notice. And then all values that are greater than five, at, at that point, um, at, at some point, which is right here, um, and that's going to be the index. So that's called the pivot index. Is that index four? Zero, one, two, three, four. Pivot index is four here. That's the first value that was greater than or equal to the pivot value. And, and e greater than or equal to is important there. So a common bug here is that, um, you know, so all values that are greater or equal to the pivot have to end up at the, uh, on the right side of the list here um, after we call partition list, all right? Um, and you do have to correctly make certain that, that values that are equal, um, all values that are equal, start at the pivot index, and, and the actual pivot index that you return from this function um, is that first value that's either equal to or greater than the pivot five in this case, right? Oh, and uh, yeah, so another thing, so I just realize that besides adding in an extra parameter, um, we actually, this function returns a value, right? So it returns the, after you're done, you have to be able to return that location where uh, the, the what's called the pivot index. So the index um, that, that's the, the location where the values are greater than or equal to the pivot value that we're using, right? This function, you know, we, we, we give a list, we give the left and the right, and then you give a fourth parameter like I talked about, which will be the actual value that you're going to be pivoting on, uh, which is five in this first test here. All right. So, um, so this is the suggested algorithm. It's not the only way you can do, you can implement the, the um, partition list, um, but, um, if you implement it a different way and you do something that's, um, how to say, computationally more expensive, this, this is an order in, so this is a linear algorithm, right? So the basic, if, if I just put it in words, is we search from the left until we find a, a value that's greater than or equal to the pivot. And again, the equal to, greater than or equal to is important here. And then we search from the left, um, and we, we stop when we find a value that's less than the pivot. And then we're just going to swap those using the swap list value. And then you keep doing that, um, but you, know, you want to continue your search from the location where you stopped the first time on the left and continue searching down from the right 
um, and then keep swapping values until left and right cross, all right? So at some point, you'll have found um, th there'll be no values left, and you'll end up getting all the values that are less than the pivot to, on the left side and all the values that are greater or equal to the pivot on the right side, right? And as soon as those cross, that's actually going to be the pivot index location. So you should be able to use that if, you, if you're detecting when left um, and right, um, when left becomes less than right, then um, that will indicate the value you have to return, the, the location where the, uh, the, the, the pivot index is that we're calling here, all right? Okay, so I know this, this is complex, um, in, in, um, especially because there's actually a loop around all these. So, so you, you, you've got a loop um, that searches from the left, so you have to increment some value um, from the left going one by one until you find the stopping condition. And then you have a second loop that goes from the right and you're decrementing your index value until you find a stopping condition. And then, then you're doing a swap, but then all four of these you're going to be in, in a, a loop um, as well. So, so you, you, got, you have some nested loops here. You've got an outer loop and inside of that outer loop you've got two um, loops that run in sequence here uh, followed by a swap. Right? And then you keep doing this outer loop until left crosses right, left is less than right. So, or, well, so as, soon as, as soon as left is greater than or equal to right, you stop. As long as left is less than right, there's a possibility there's more values that need to be swapped. So you go back and, and do your search from the left and the right side and try and swap. Um, all right, so that was the um, Partition list, and then finally, quicksort. Quicksort, if you can get partition list working, might be relatively simple. Okay. Um, so I see. Maybe I should. I, I didn't describe what the signature is of the quicksort function. So the quicksort function is going to have the same signature as your first two, if I remember correctly. So, and again, since I didn't describe it, uh, you, you should always be able to infer what the signature needs to be if you go and look at the tests that you're given, right? So if we look at the test cases for the quick sort. So actually there, there's um, um, two unit tests for the, the, the find and swap pivot. And then in the second one, we actually perform a sort by hand showing you kind of the steps that you have to do in your quick sort that you implement. Okay, so, so this second unit test should be useful because it kind of tells you what your implementation of quick sort is going to be. Right? But anyway, so if you, if you look at the first quick sort test here, notice we call it again with just the um, array and the left and the right, and it's a void function. So it's expecting that the array gets sorted uh, in place, right? So, so all the stuff happens by sorting the, the values in the array of integers that you pass in, and after you return from it, the, the list should be sorted, right? So if we give it an unsorted list, 12 and 6, after we return, the values are in sorted order, ascending sorted order, so 6 followed by 12, okay? So yeah, if you look at it, um, so quicksort is going to be a recursive algorithm. Um, so the base case is going to be if if the list size is zero or one, or in this case, since you're be given, being given left and right, the base case is, is that if left is equal to or less than right. So that implies that your array is, is uh, you know, so if, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, oh, my um, assignment description might be incorrect here. So you, you normally expect left to be less than or equal to right. So, um, so, so actually what you need to do is, is check if, if, if um, right is less than or equal to left. 
um, now that I look at this, I need to fix the assignment description there. So, so when right is equal to left, um, that means that the array is of size one, right? Um, so if I, if I asked to do a sort of an array of size one, I would give left and right, like both of, of, of the, the index zero, if the, the array only had one value in it, right? Um, so when right is less than or equal to left, um, or if the, the array is of size zero, then um, right would have to be less than left. So anyway, um, if it's not the basic case, so you can just return and do nothing. Right, so, so lists of size one are kind of by definition already sorted, nothing new. Uh, but um, the, 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 the general case is that um, uh, you're gonna call the, the um, uh, you're gonna start by calling the um, partition list function, right? To, to partition the list, um, given the left and the right, Uh, I'm sorry, no, so you're going to, by, by hand, you're going to choose the pivot. And no, sorry, the, the, you, uh, I should also change this here. So you want to reuse the, um, uh, the partition list function to do this step for you, right? So this will choose the, the, the pivot that's in the middle, and it will um, um, swap it to the end for you. Right, and then it will give you the the um, the what that pivot value was as the result. Right, and then you're going to call partition list um, for left and right. Although your size of the array um, is one smaller after you do this, right. Um, so you have to make certain that you call it correctly. So it's uh, left and right, but your right has shrunk by one since you've chosen a part uh, a um, pivot and you move that to the end of the list there. Okay. Um, so after you call partition list, then though, you want to swap the the pivot to its correct position. Okay. So when you when you partition the list, the one thing you're guaranteed, since all at the at the the pivot index that's returned from this, all the values at that index. Um, are greater than or equal to the pivot value. So if you swap the pivot value back into that location, you know that that pivot value is now at its correct position. And then you know all the values to the right after you do that swap are gonna be greater than or equal to the pivot value. And all the values to the left are gonna be less than, or um, are gonna be strictly less than the pivot value, right? And after that, then you can recursively call quick sort on the, the left side of the list. So from left up to the that that pivot location, k minus one, where k is the um, the, the 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 pivot um, the partition index that's returned here, right? And then k plus one to right to to um, sort all the values to the right of the the pivot that we used. Okay. So that, that's what the quicksort is. So, but it, it will be, there's no loops or anything in, in the quicksort. You just have to you know, implement um, a recursion, recursion um, with one base case. And then the general case though, is you have to do these um, you know, three or four steps here, um, including call, making two recursive calls to, to sort on the left and the right side of, of the, the list. So. Okay, um, so that was kind of all I wanted to cover today. That was kind of um, a quick overview of what you need to do uh, for your quick sort here um, assignment. Um, though, if there's any questions, let me know. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video then. Um, and I'll see you guys um, on the next help session. If anybody, um, this is, you know, um, want to talk about either materials for this week or this assignment or whatever. So, all right, with that, I'll go ahead and stop this video and I'll see you guys later then.